So 7.1 and 7.2 are about what's called a point estimate. And it's how do we use probability to estimate something in our population. So we use our sample statistics to estimate our population. Let's make a note of that because that's something that's important. So we want to use sample statistics to estimate population parameters. And these two sections are just very theoretical. So first your parameter, again, that's some property of your underlying population that you don't know, and we're going to call it theta. So this is just very general as a theta. Now your statistic is some value that you compute from your sample, and we do this because we want to use that to estimate our population parameter. So let's consider we want to find the average height of all USU students. So your population would be all USU students. We're going to let this mu, so mu, represent the average height of all the USU students. So mu is our population average, our population mean. So mu is population mean. Now in order to estimate mu, we might sample, say, 100 students chosen at random, measure their heights, and then compute the average of our sample. So x bar is our sample average. So we do have different notations for each thing, and you will want to memorize that. Mu is for your population mean, x bar is for your sample mean. Or mean and average, we use those interchangeably. Now we'll use our sample mean x bar to estimate mu, or our population mean. So again, our sample statistic estimates our population parameter. That's what you need to memorize the most from this section. Now why do we call it a point estimate? It's because we just have like one value. So if our estimate is like 30, 30 is just a one number, so it's called like a point. But it's, if you think about your point estimate, it's kind of our best guess. So our point estimate of theta is our best guess for theta. Now it turns out in statistics there's more than one good point estimate of a parameter. There's different ways you can estimate things. So what we have to do is try and figure out what's the best way to estimate it. One of the things we check is bias. So we would say an estimate is unbiased if the expected value of the estimate is equal to the true value. So let's write that out. So that's the expected value Of, now theta hat, theta hat is the estimate. We, we put a hat on it to tell us that it's our estimate. So the expected value of, oh wait, I meant, wanted to write the estimate there. Expected value of the estimate is equal to the true value. Okay. So it's unbiased if the expected value of the estimate is equal to the true value. So that's unbiased. Otherwise, it would be bias. Bias means that you know you're going to be wrong or you're kind of systematically wrong. If you do have something that's biased, then how do you calculate the bias? You'll do the expected value of the estimate minus the true value. And we'll show you what that means. Now, all else being equal, if you have equal variances, now you could read the section in your textbook, but it's probably more advanced than we need to be in this class, but you can also check the variance of an estimate and the one with the smallest variance is going to be best. And if you have equal variances, then the smaller your bias, the better. And again, the hat means that it is an estimate. So let's actually practice these nice little theories here. Let's suppose that the expected value of x is mu over 2. The expected value of y is mu. Now again, these are very theoretical. It's not really a practical application here. Is mu hat now, we said there's different estimates you can choose. In this one, they're just choosing, let's use an estimate of x plus y to try and estimate mu. And we want to see if it's biased or not. So the first thing you're going to do is you'll find the expected value of your estimate. Well, what is our estimate? Our estimate is x plus y, so we need to find the expected value of x plus y. Now, this comes back to all of those expected value rules that we've used quite a few times now throughout the semester. This will be the expected value of x plus the expected value of y. 
and the expected value of x is mu over 2, expected value of y is mu. So if you add those together, you get 1.5 mu. But what were we trying to estimate? We were trying to estimate mu. This is not equal to mu, that's 1.5 mu. So this is not biased or it is unbiased. And if you actually want to calculate the bias, the formula for bias is you take, well, what, what, what are you going to expect to get from your, ex, from your estimate and minus what the true value should be? So our expected value we found is 1.5 mu, and we want to minus mu, so we get 0.5 mu would be your actual bias. Now, how could you find an unbiased estimator for mu? This question is usually just kind of a guess and check. So I might notice looking up here that when I added the two together, I got 1.5 mu, and that was too big. So maybe I should make this smaller. And I might think, let's see, so basically I can pick... Um, ways to find or estimate mu and then check for bias. So I noticed here I had a mu and I'm like, well maybe if I just had that divided by 2, then it would work. So what if I tried like mu hat equals x plus y over 2? then the expected value of that would be the expected value of x plus y over 2. And so that would be the expected value of x plus the expected value of y over 2, using our expected value rules. So then this would be the x, expected value of x is mu over 2, expected value of y is mu, but we divide it by 2 and we get mu. So that is unbiased. So I could do that, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the only way you could do it. You could pick other ones that might work. Like what if I just picked an estimate, I'll just use y. What if I just use y? Then the expected value of that would just be the expected value of y, which is mu. And I was supposed to get to mu, so that would be unbiased. So there's usually lots of different unbiased estimates that you could use. And then you go on to more complicated things of, well, let's check their variance, or let's kind of see which ones will give us more accurate results. But these ones will at least give you the same expected value. Now, so we've kind of done this once. I think what we'll actually do is we'll probably skip... 174, 175, we'll probably skip actually doing those, and I might go just your homework accordingly. But just as a final, let's, I guess, look at them, we just won't show them. If you have a binomial distribution with n and p, then if you look at your sample proportion, the sample proportion p hat, is an unbiased estimate of the probability p. Right, let me actually write that. Let's see, the population probability p. We're just not going to prove it. And I forgot I put this example in, so let's do it. The Pew Research Center surveyed 475 U.S. adults. Of those, 270 think that it's unacceptable for the government to monitor communication. Let's estimate the percentage of all the U.S. adults who believe the surveillance of American citizens is unacceptable. Okay, so I would look at this and I'd say, in our sample, the 
we have 270 out of 475, which is... Point five seven. So we'll say point five seven. Think it's unacceptable. Okay. So I estimate point five seven of all U.S. think it is unacceptable. So for a very complicated lead-in, we're basically saying if our sample pr proportion or percentage is 0.57, then that's our best estimate for the entire U.S. or the entire population. And then I was going to do a proof that the sample mean the sample mean X bar is an unbiased or good estimate of the population mean, but I think we'll skip the proof. And we'll just remember that we use sample mean. To estimate population mean. And it might seem obvious like, okay, yes, we use the sample mean to estimate the population mean. But we've actually had to do a lot of theory and prove that that is, yes, the best estimate. And finally, our sample variance. So sample variance is an unbiased estimate of population variance. So again, we'll use sample variance to estimate population variance. But we did have to divide by that n minus 1, otherwise it wasn't unbiased. It would have been biased. Okay. 